everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, Analytics Advocate at Google, and today I'm joined by John Mesh, who's a Product Manager on Google Optimize. In today's quick tip, John is going to show us a walkthrough of the Optimize Editor and how you can use it to build out your variations for the experiments you want to run. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to John. Great. Thanks, Krista. Mm -hmm. So the Optimize Visual Editor is one of the most powerful things about Google Optimize. So let's go ahead and do a quick tour, and I'll show you how to make a few simple changes. So on the details page here, I've created a variant already, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on that row. And you'll see here that I can go straight into the editor. And while that's loading, there's a few different things that I can show you about this page. Now, of course, you'll kind of see that I've already got this little selection box following my mouse around, and that's great if you want to pick a particular element. But uh, let's do a quick tour of this top bar up here. So, of course, you can always go back to the test details page. You can see your title and the status of your experiment. This box here lets you check, choose or select from different variants. You can also make a new variant, and you can do things like renaming that variant or making a copy there. This selector here is our mobile emulation. So this lets you do things like look at what this experience would appear as on, say, a Nexus 5X. And that changes the screen size. It also changes the user agent to make sure that you're knowing exactly what those users are going to see when they come to your experiment. There's a change list here, and I'll show you what comes in that in just a minute after we've made some changes. This is here a, a diagnostics tool. So this lets you check and see if there's anything wrong about your variant before you run your test to make sure that you're doing your best job of getting that to be as high fidelity as possible. You can, of course, get to help here. And then finally, done takes you back to the detail page as well. Now, the second bar here, there's a few different controls here. This here is an advanced selection uh, tool, and if you're a little more advanced, you might want to check that out. It's a great way to type in the selectors that you know you want to use. But this bar here is really what I want to focus on for the moment. This is a hierarchy bar, and this shows you exactly in your navigation of your site how things are structured. It kind of tells you where you're at. So a great way to use this is if you want to see uh, maybe a slightly different element than you're selecting right now, you can do things like pick one level up and make sure that you're finding exactly the right element that you want to edit. Over here, there's some settings for the editor in this little gear icon. There's also an interactive mode, and this is great if you need to go to a different page as part of a dynamic flow, or you need to access something that's a little bit different and isn't quite as easy to access when you're in the edit mode. This icon here lets you edit CSS directly, so if you want to go and just type in CSS there, you can do that. Now, a couple of other things on this panel right here. This is our style editor. And there's a, a lot of different properties in here. This is things like text size and background colors, borders, et cetera. That's also where you can change things like an image uh, HTML reference if you need to swap out an image or something like that. But let's go ahead and uh, make a couple of changes to some elements here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this text. So I've selected that, and I'm actually going to right click on that, and that gives me access to a few of those changes. So let's edit this text here. I'll just say slow down a bit. And that's pretty easy. Uh, the next thing I'm going to try here is it feels like maybe there's a little too much space here. So I can do things like I can resize that if I want, or maybe I just decide to get rid of it altogether. I can just remove that element, no problem. Uh, this button, let's take a look at that. So I want to try a slightly different text size. That's a little bit cramped. Maybe a, a little bit bigger text might do a better job. So I can change that font size, no problem. I'm also going to change the background color. My designer is not going to like this too much, but I think we're going to go for a, a bright pink here. All right, so there's that. We can also do a few other things. So if I want to go and do a little bit of drag and drop reordering, I can do that pretty easily and swap those products around, make sure I'm focusing on the products that I want my users to see. And then finally, there's some more advanced functionality here as well. So if I click on a particular element and right click, you can also see that I can do things like editing raw HTML. I can also add a, a JavaScript a uh, function that I want to run right when that element loads, and a few other things. The final thing I'll show you on this particular page is these controls right here. So if I want to undo any of those changes, maybe I decide that I really don't want that button to be pink, I can find the right place in my flow to make sure that I'm undoing the changes that I don't want and just keeping the ones that I do. The last thing that I, I'll show you on this page is the change list. So you can see here, these are all the different changes that I've just created. And I could do things like delete those changes if I don't want a particular one, or I can go back and edit one of those changes. So we'll do that, hit done there. We'll save that variant, head back on over to the detail page, and uh, we'll show you in a separate video how to finish setting up the rest of this experiment. Thanks.
Thanks, John.